Hi, everybody. I'm Joe for jazbeescasebreaks.com. And that, let me introduce you to 2022 Bowman Sterling Baseball. A lot of prospect hunting here. We're doing all 12 boxes. This is Ram Team Break number 260 autographs. Pretty nice stuff. Big time value. We comboed up a couple teams right there. Big thanks to this group. Thanks to the people who bought their spot straight up. And congrats again to the people who won those spots in the uh, the two fillers that we did. We got another full case loaded up. Uh, Jaspiescasebreaks.com. Check it out. All right. There are the teams right there, plus the combos. Mets A's comboed. Cardinals Blue Jays comboed. Let's roll it. Let's randomize it. Three and a two. Five times for names and teams. Good luck. One, two, three, four, five. Chad down to Jason. Three and a two, five times for the teams. One, two, three, four, and five. After five times, we got the ATL down to the Chicago Cubs. All right, Chad with the Braves, Royals, Tigers, and the Cardinals Blue Jays combo. Jason, last spot mojo with the Phillies. Chris with the Brewers. Chad with the Rangers. Thomas with the White Sox. Chad with the Angels. Charles with the Yankees. Chad with the Mets and A's. Gary with the Guardians. I think, uh, I think Tito just won a Manager of the Year earlier tonight. Chad with the Red Sox. Emma with the Astros. Chris with the Pirates. Chad with the Nats. Gary with my Dodgers. Bennett with the O's. Ed with the Giants. Chad with the Reds. Charles with the Twins. Ed with the Mariners. Michael with the Rays. Chad with the Marlins. Derek with the Rockies. Chad with the Padres and Diamondbacks. And Jason with the Shy City Cubs. Let's sort by column A or column B alphabetically. And we're going to pause the video. When we come back, we're going to see if there's any trades. Then we'll have that full case break. Stick around. BRB. All right, welcome back, everybody. Look, there was a deal done between Bennett and Chris. So Chris is now out of the Brew Crew spot and into the Orioles spot. We'll put uh, T there for trade so we know who draws first blood in the trade. Bennett, you are now in the Brew, Brew Crew spot. Nice. Put the T right there as well so you know that that was a trade. Let's print. Let's rip. Trade window closed. There's the full fresh case right there. And there's the final printout, hot off the presses. Thanks everyone for getting in, for making this happen. I appreciate it. All right, now let's pop this case open. Twenty twenty two Bowman Sterling. A lot of prospects in here, a lot of big hit potential in here. A lot of potential for these box to slip around here. guys on the front of the box. Each little mini box has an autograph. Good luck everybody. They're starting to roll out some of these awards. I think the the rookie of the year awards was that was that surprise I thought I mean Julio Rodriguez AL. I thought uh, Michael Harris winning Rookie of the Year was a little bit of a surprise. I thought it was going to be his teammate, Spencer Strider. They did Manager of the Year, so uh, Terry Francona for the Guardians, of course. Buck Showalter, who became the first skipper to win Manager of the Year with four different teams. Pretty impressive. And that's a record tying fourth for Buck Showalter, and I think Terry Francona has three. Yeah. I 
Nice. I think both... Any objections to that? I think I feel like both of those were well-deserved. Yes, let's play who are who are the four teams. Well, Mets are one. Orioles, he must have won one with the O's back in the day, no? Yankees? If you're wondering, Brandon Hyde for Baltimore was second place in the AL, and Dave Roberts for the Dodgers, uh, second place in the NL. All right, box one, good luck. And I want to, all cards have to ship in this, right? Uh, it doesn't say, but all cards will ship. All right, and we've got... Ellie De La Cruz, nice. 87 out of 150, nice one for the Reds. Chad with that one, won that team in the filler. And we'll do an autograph recap at the end of this as well. And there's Hedbert Perez for the Brew Crew. Bennett drawing first blood in the trade. Bennett also saying Yankees, Rangers, O's. Is his guess, or is that the is that the correct answer? What did I miss? I miss Rangers. I got Yankees O's. Nice Bobby Wood Jr. and Colton Cowser. Oh, look, the trade balancing out already. Chris Butler on the other side of that trade with the Orioles. Nice. That worked out. Wait, those, hold on. Let me set that aside for a second. I think those Bobby Wood Jr. cards are rookie cards, right? They are. All right. There's a Jose Siri. Hey, Siri to 150. And Armando Cruz for Chad and the Nationals. Siri going to Emma and the Strohs. A couple Bobby Witt rookie cards for Chad and the Royals. There's O'Neill Cruz. And O'Neill Cruz, even better, to 150. 15 out of 150. Pirates, that'll be for Chris. And Pedro Pineda for the uh, Mets A's combo going to Chad. Zoom in. What's going on? Should the World Cup team random break have the combo teams comboed up? Uh, well, we split them apart. That was we, or we made the decision to split those apart, so they are not comboed. They they have been uncomboed. That helps make the filler a little less expensive. And if you buy a full spot in that um, that team random, you can win a full spot too. All right, next box. Hot stove heating up a little bit too. I think all the uh, qualifying offers have been sent out and uh, everyone declined except for two. Martin Perez took the $19.65 million and uh, Jock Peterson accepted the 19.65 million. I'm surprised the Giants gave Jock Peterson a qualifying offer. 
Players who accept qualifying offers are signed with their teams for the next season at the designated value. Those who don't accept remain free agents. And if a new team signs them, their old team receives draft pick compensation. From the time the system was implemented in 2012, only 13 of the 124 players who received qualifying offers have accepted it. So, little, little stats for you. Declining the qualifying offer was uh, Dansby Swanson. So pretty much, I guess, anyone who's out of the uh, Correa, Xander, Trey Turner sweepstakes, Dansby Swanson is not a bad consolation prize. Wilson Contreras. Declined the offer. I think that's to be expected. Trey Turner declined the offer. Carlos Rodon, Chris Bassett, Jacob DeGrom, Brandon Nemo, Xander Bogarts, Nathan Ivaldi, Aaron Judge. All declined. Uh, Tyler Anderson declined with the Dodgers. Signed with the Angels already. Anthony Rizzo declined and re-signed with the Yankees. All right. Onwards, we got Jonathan Class for Ed and the Mariners. Class A? Class. And we've got a Juan Soto. Seven out Is that the picture? No, we had Otani in the picture. <laughs> I like this. Uh, Juan Soto, 7 out of 10. Really like this design. Chad with the National, still Nationals edition of Juan Soto in this one. Nice. Sterling signage. I dig it. Real sharp looking card. We got Nelson Velasquez to 150. Kind of hard to see with the pattern there, but 132 out of 150. And Alexander Mojica for the Pirates. That'll be for Chris. And Velasquez goes to the Cubs. That'll be for Jason. And behind rookie Wander Franco is Jairo Pomares for my rivals, the Giants' Ed with San Francisco. All Wander Franco rookie cards going to Michael and the Rays. Maybe, some, maybe we'll find some parallels of him. There's Wilman Diaz. 81 out of 99 for my Dodgers. Going to Gary and Trey Sweeney. Charles and the Yankees. All right, next box. What other, uh, I mean, it's the silly season. The hot stove, a lot of things percolating on the hot stove. You know, who knows what's what's true or not. You know, teams that say that they have, you know, have strong interest in a player, that could change within a day. Doesn't mean that they're actually going to land that player. So, crazy. But yeah, Tyler Anderson and Rizzo are sort of the biggest names um, signing new deals. Angels need that starting pitching. If Tyler Anderson can, can repeat what he did with my Dodgers, I'm sure Angels fans will be very happy about that. Um, Mets, considering Verlander and uh, the Japanese player, Senga. Royals, we, we were talking about this with Gilo, big Royals fan. Royals pursuing a new ballpark in downtown Kansas City. I think their lease runs out at the end of this decade. I think 2030, if I remember the article correctly. But they, if, if plans move ahead on that downtown project, I think they might want to try to get out of that lease a little bit earlier. So they can be, could be in the center of the action.
All right, what other what other baseball news happening, ladies and gentlemen? Let me know what your uh, what your favorite team is and what they're looking like they're going to do in the offseason. I'm not sure what uh, I'm a Dodgers fan. I'm not sure what the Dodgers are going to do. I think just because of of because they're the Dodgers, you know. I think they're all they're always going to be linked to the big name free agents. But historically, at least with this new ownership, that this ownership hasn't really been into just going out and getting big free agents. Now they've traded for guys and being been able to to pay big money for them. But I think Trevor Bauer and like Freddie Freeman, I think, were the two big sort of free agents, straight up free agent signings for them. So I'm not sure how how big they're going to be on some of these players out there. Guardians, Gary with the Guardians. Tried to trade, couldn't trade Mojo, gets that George Valera. There's ED Cap to 199. Let's save that Torkelson too. And Carlos Colmenares. That is from Michael P. and the Rays. Yeah, Gilo saying rebuilding the stadium before rebuilding the team. Although I guess their hope is that within, like, let's say they get that stadium done a little bit earlier. I guess the hope is. They'll have a team by the time they move into a new stadium. I think that's good planning. So let's say, you know, you put three or three to five seasons under Bobby Wood Jr.'s belt, right? There's Henry Mendez one, up to 150. Bennett with the Brew Crew. You know, and they, they get some other young players coming up the ranks. Maybe they make a, a free agent splash or two. And the next thing you know, they're opening a new ballpark with a nice team, potentially. There's Jason Dominguez, 10 out of 50, Yankees. It's gonna be for Charles, and we got Oscar Colas. Nice one for the White Sox, Thomas, for the White Sox. Yeah, apparently Royals grabbing a lot of coaching staff from the Rays, so it'll be interesting to see what they do. I have to imagine that the uh, that what, what do you say, uh, Gabe? You're you're out there in that neck of the woods. There's my cell Rubina to one ninety nine. What's the temperature of this new stadium? Like, what's the temperature of the people? Are people hot on it? Or is this a pipe dream? Is this not going to happen? Are the city city's going to not not like that? Benny uh, and the Jets? No, Benny and the Rockies. Derek. The rocks. If they're trying to, if they're trying to get funding, I think one of the articles mentioned maybe like fifty-fifty funding, like team and 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 city or county or whatever. Well, that gets a little tricky, you know. It, in this day and age, not a lot of cities or counties want to want to be on the hook for a stadium. According to MLBTradeRumors.com, one of my favorite sites for the offseason, Dodgers selecting four players. They've selected catcher Diego Cartaya, Michael Bush, Andy Pagas, and Johnny DeLuca to the 40-man roster. That's protecting those players from the uh, Rule 5 Rule five draft. Cartaya is uh, ninth overall, according to Baseball America's top 100 prospects. I could, I could see Cartaya kind of... Maybe maybe twenty twenty three, and all, both three of those guys, Cartaya, Bush, and Pagas, could probably get into the uh, could get into the action um, in next season. I think that's what the Dodgers need. I, I'm sure the Dodgers will be linked to a lot of big free agent names, but I think the Dodgers really need to see what they have in some of these youngsters here. Really put them, throw them into the fire, and 
you know, and provide a little fire for the team. I think that. You know, I think that's a little fire in the belly from from hungry youngsters. You know, and some of the Dodgers players kind of aging out. Justin Turner kind of aging out a little bit. So let's let's replenish it. Let's see what we got there. So barely passed a tax vote for $250 million funding on some renovations years ago. Not sure how the $2 billion is going to go, right? There's Rosemary Quintana, 38 out of 99 for the Nats. That's going to be for Chad. And then there's Jordan Villars for the Phillies. Jason with the Fighting Phils. Great season for them. Yeah, the Phillies are kind of a team that has, you know, some, some vet guys, but also some hungry youngsters. Some younger players that are, that are pretty good. Just bring $2 billion to bring Otani to Kansas City. Right, and with that Otani money, bring butts and seats. The Royals can just pay for a new stadium themselves. And there's Royce Mark Quintana, 22 out of 25. His autograph this time for Chad and the Nationals. Yeah, then the owners can just pay for it all. The house that Otani built. Cal Raleigh and Xander Bogarts. Where does he end up? 19 out of 50. And there's Luis Angel Acuna, Ronald's brother, 62 out of 75 for Texas. That's going to be for Chad. Supposedly, he's he's pretty good too. I like that that acetate look for the uh, that Xander Bogarts card there. That goes to Chad and the Red Sox. There's O'Neill Cruz, Stephen Kwan to 199, and Alex Benelis, 12 out of 50 for Chad and the Red Sox. Stephen Kwan might have had a chance to win that AL Rookie of the Year if uh, Julio Rodriguez wasn't around. And we got Dory Lorenzo for the Houston Astros. That's going to be for Emma and the Strohs. was a Rookie of the Year finalist. He ended up being third. Adley Rushman was second. That Orioles team looked really good last season. I think they quietly had a really nice season. They've got a lot of youngsters on that team coming up the ranks, so it might be good to, good to check in on some of your old Orioles cards, if any. MLBTradeRumors.com also has a free agent prediction contest. I need to get into that. When's the deadline? Tomorrow? It's a little early, but I might have to throw my hat in that ring there. Um, according to MLBTradeRumors.com, they've got top five or top 50 free agents and their predictions. So the top free agent, Aaron Judge. And uh, MLB Trade Rumors is guessing eight years, $332 million. And from the different writers that are on that staff, most are thinking Yankees. And that's kind of the funny thing, um, is that uh, after all this talk about the Yankees not, you know, not giving him a huge extension before the season started and blah, 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 blah. 
at the end of the day, there's only so many teams that could pay for an Aaron Judge, right? Watch, he just goes right back to the Yankees. There's Rubio Angeles, Angeles, Padres. That's going to be for Chad. Although, a lot of people are saying Giants. I don't know how often that home narrative actually plays out, but he is from Northern California. Behind Gavin Sheets is Victor Acosta, 51 out of 125. That's true, yeah, Michael Harris was good as well, but Aaron Judge, J-Rod did hide a lot of storylines this year. And we've got Milcar Perez, Mariners. It's for Ed. Ed P. And the M's. It's Julio Rodriguez also for the Mariners. Your official AL Rookie of the Year. And we've got Carlos Colmenares. Uh, that is 10 out of 99. 10.99. Be sure to get your 10.99s in order this year, ladies and gentlemen. I had a tax season. That's for Tampa Bay, Michael Pete. And we have Brian Acuna. I think that's the youngest of the Acuna brothers. Pretty talented family. That's going to go to Charles and the Twins. Alec Gordon Hunter Pence are last players you heard of giving a hometown discount. Well, I don't know if Aaron Judge is going to give the Yankees a hometown discount, but he may end up going right back to the Yankees, though. Not too many teams who can pay for the Yankees and pay for a player like Aaron Judge. The Yankees are one of them. Now, so according to MLBTradeRumors.com, they got Carlos Correa as the second best free agent on their free agent list. In fact, ultra, for those of you watching live, if you want to follow along with me, you can I drop the link in the chat. Um, they've got Carlos Correa going to, that's the, going to the Giants. Although one writer says twins. But three of the four are saying Giants in nine years, 288 million. So they're thinking that the that, that big free agent money is gonna go to go to the Giants instead. Trey Turner, third on the list. We got two Phillies, a Giants, and a Dodger. Yeah, I'm not sure what I'm not sure what the Dodger and do. Trey Turner just exhibits such a unique, I mean, with his speed, such a unique player. And I guess with, with uh, remember, remember next year's rules. They're limiting the times you can throw to a base. The pitchers can throw to a base to check a runner. The bases are also slightly larger. I think by enough of an amount that it'll make a difference. I think like two inches or something like that. Which if you've watched any any replay throughout the season, it's a couple inches could make a difference in a stolen base or, or an out. And there's no more shift. It's not really going to affect Trey Turner too much, but... No more shift. So that can make the free agent market pretty interesting because there may be players who may have been just burned by the shift all of a sudden get a boost in value. We've got Christian Santana, Tigers, Chad, Tiger uppercut. Bobby Witt Jr. for the Royals, also for Chad. No parallels yet of this guy. Wander Franco, 
Warming Bernabel, 6 out of 25. Victor Costa, Padres chat. Right, yeah, does, does Joey Gallo's career suddenly get revived a little bit? Well, not revived, eh, maybe revived a little bit. With changes in the shift rule, that might help him out a lot. There is Eli De La Cruz, 116 out of 150. And behind him, Miguel Blias for Chad and the Red Sox. All right, not sure how you feel about the check runner limits, no shifts. I like the no shifts. I think baseball was just kind of hoping that players would naturally just hit the other way or bunt more and the shift would naturally just go away, but it's not, so I get... I think that's going to create a little more excitement on the base paths. And that's essentially what people want at the end of the day. There's Pedro Pineda, 72 out of 150. Strikeout, 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 home run. Strikeout, 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 home run. It's not that exciting. A double, a stolen base, someone legging out a triple, someone stealing third base. That could get pretty exciting. There's Hoy Park. 73 out of 75, and Jose Ramos for my Dodgers. Gary, with the boys in blue. I, I mean, does that, Gilo's like, I just load my team with fast guys. That's, you're kind of joking, but I mean, maybe that's a, that could be a new strategy. Because now, now that stolen base comes back more into play. You know, so... Maybe you maybe maybe that value maybe that that math changes with someone like Trey Turner. Maybe he ends up getting more money than we think, and someone's gonna be like, "We value the speed." You know, it'd be it might be fun to see another. I wondered if we'd ever see someone steal a hundred bases ever again. But it might happen. So say a pitcher used all of his pickoff attempts, what's the top runner from taking a lead halfway to the next base after? Nothing. So I'm guessing that you will not see pitchers even reach the pick. Well, what is the pickoff limit? Three, maybe? I doubt that they'll even they'll even get to that limit. Or most pitchers won't even get to that limit. Although, it'd be interesting, Diego, what if you got a, a big old guy, got not, not too fast guy on first, right? Who's to say, uh, what if you do use all your pickoff attempts and you dare that guy to steal? Or is that too cute? Would that be too cute? I dare you to steal. There's Jake Berger, 54 out of 150. And Christian Hernandez. Right, you're gonna do Rookie of the Year. Yeah, that's right, speaking of Rookie of the Year, Christian Hernandez for the Cubs. I mean, if you are if if you debate with the pitcher on the mound that that maybe his 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 backside is is rather large there's Jason with the Cubs 
Get in his head. There's Luis Rodriguez. Nice. Dodgers. That's going to be for Gary. Another Juan Soto, this time to 99 for Chad. Wow. 27 out of 99. Sterling signage autograph, Juan Soto. Nationals edition. I thought Spencer Strider was going to win that Rookie of the Year Awards teammate guy instead. There's Denzer Guzman for the Halos. That'll be for Chad. There's Ernie Clement, 62 out of 75 for the Cubs, and Harry Ford. Not Henry Ford, but Harry Ford. Ed with the M's. Right, some team's going to load up on fast guys, and then it'll be equivalent to like the three ball era in the NBA. Could be. Runners could be, base runs could be running rampant. All right, next box. Next free agent, Xander Bogarts. MLBTradeRumors.com saying seven years, 189 million. They're guessing Dodgers. Two Dodgers votes, a Twins vote and a Mariners vote. That'll be interesting. Maybe if the Dodgers don't re-sign Trey Turner, they're gonna go to Xander Bogarts, reunite him with former teammate Mookie Betts. Dansby Swanson after that, seven years, $154 million. These guys are guessing Cubs. Three of the four guessing Cubs, one guessing Twins. Carlos Rodon, Mets, Rangers, Phillies are, are some of the guesses. Jacob DeGrom, three years, $135 million is their guess. Rangers, Cardinals, Mets. I wonder if the Dodgers will go for Jacob DeGrom. That's, that seems to be their, their, sort of, their sort of style. Short term, but high average, average annual value. Three years, they'll, they'll probably do three years. I could see him doing that. Three years, 135. Dodgers could use a little starting pitching. Justin Verlander, also three years, 120. I feel like someone linked the uh, Dodgers with Justin Verlander. I'm not sure if I like that. I'd rather go, rather go younger. Although Jacob McGrom's not all that young, but he's younger than Justin Verlander. Brandon Nemo, maybe five years, 110. Mets, Astros, Giants. Yeah, I guess he is a free agent, isn't he? Wilson Contreras, four years, 84 million. Twins, Diamondbacks, Rays, Astros are some of the guesses. Christian Santana to 199 and Jordan McCants. Chad and the Marlins. Got Romy Gonzalez, Speckle, 62 out of 99, and we got Kyle Manzardo for the Rays. It's gonna be for Michael. We got Jordan Viars, 39 out of 125. Phillies, that's going to be for Jason, last spot mojo.
Uh, Roberto Campos, 47 out of 199. And Wilman Diaz, Gary, and the Dodgers. Sal Freelick, Brew Crew, another brewer for Bennett. All right, four more boxes to go, almost there. Got more baseball in the store. Check it out, jazbeescasebreaks.com. We got uh, Seng Senga. These guys are guessing the uh, Japanese player. Cubs, Red Sox, Padres. Five years, $75 million. And he'll be a free agent. No posting fee required. It's going to be 30 in January. It's tricky with the uh, the the uh, Korean or uh, or Japanese pitchers coming out of there, especially because of you know posting rules. Sometimes they're on the older side by the time they get to Major League Baseball. But five five and seventy five that feels pretty safe. Take a gamble on the pitcher through through his thirty five year thirty five season. Cruz and a Dustin Harris for the Rangers. Chad. Bobby Wood Jr., nice. 50, uh, 65 out of 75. Nice parallel. And behind him, Roberto Campos for the Tigers. It's for Chad. And uh, the Bobby Wood also for Chad. He's got the Royals. And we got Yoswar Garcia. That is 91 out of 99. It's for the Phillies. Last spot mojo, Jason K. Number is kind of hard to see. There it is. 91 out of 99. Julio Rodriguez. Greg Diekman to 75. And Alex Benelis for the Red Sox. Chad. And there's Jose Ramos. I like the flourish on the, uh, the, the finishing flourish on that autograph, Jose, but try to keep it inside the cart. Gary with the Dodgers. Got a little excited there. Maybe that was the last one he had to sign in the big stack. All right, a few more to go. What are some other free agents that are rounding out this list? Josh Bell is around. He's been sort of, sort of up and down. Chris Bassett. Jamison Tyon's a free agent. Some injury concerns there, but he could be pretty solid. Benintendi's a free agent. 
Taiwan Walker, Sean Manaya, Andrew Heaney, Jose Abreu, Mitch Haniger, Noah Syndergaard, Rizzo's already signed, Ivaldi, Taylor Rogers, J.D. Martinez. That kind of rounds out the, uh, the top 25 right there. Yeah, that's right. J.D. Martinez is a free agent. Interesting. There's been speculation the Dodgers are going to want to reset their luxury cap tax penalty years. I think after three years, three or four years, then you start getting hit with max penalties. But all you got to do is spend one year under the luxury tax, and then that that penalty process is replaced. Yeah, kind of low-key, right? J.D. Martinez, the guys on MLB Trade Rumors are guessing Guardians, Orioles, Mariners, two years, $30 million. Is that it? He's a $15 million a year player? Has he fallen off that much? He's already he's 35? Wow. I guess time flies by. Didn't realize he was already 35. There's Nelson Velasquez to 199 and Shaylin Polanco. That's a nice one for the Pirates, Chris Butler. We got here. We got Isaac Pacheco, 81 out of 150, and his autograph, 54 out of 75, both for the Tigers, both for Chad. Tiger uppercut. We got Luis Gill, rookie autograph for the Bronx Bombers. That's going to go to Charles and the Yankees. We got Ellie Dela Cruz, nice. Reds. Chad. How long do you estimate it takes to sign 199 autographs? That's a good question. There's Spencer Torgelson, rookie autograph. Nice. Tigers, Chad. I don't know, Mike. Go get Go get a couple hundred index cards and a pen and sign your name on each of those cards and then come back to me. Tell me how long it take, took. I mean, once you get into a groove, it's got to be like... like a maybe if you get into a good rhythm like what a couple seconds a card but then I don't know I mean maybe does your hand start to cramp after X amount of cards and you gotta you gotta you gotta pause Well, I don't know. I mean, th th these are just the opinions of these uh, MLB trade rumors guys, Rex. 
I mean, who knows what's really going to happen? You know, but according to them, I mean, they, yeah, three of the four guys were thinking that it's going to be, be Cubs. But also think about some of the free. He's one of those guys that that rejected a qualifying offer, so that means they all, the Cubs will also have to give up a draft pick. So, you know, that that makes a difference for some teams, especially rebuilding teams, if they're like, hey, maybe we need. Maybe we want to keep that draft pick. Is Danzig Swanson worth the money and the draft pick? I, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if he goes back to the Braves, to be honest with you. All right. There's Denzer Guzman for the Halos. Chad with the Angels. Down to our penultimate box. There's Matt Manning to 50. And Joshua Garcia. Another Philly for Jason. Gilo is playing a samurai video game, and it required you to write a haiku. Five seven five. It's Henry Davis to one ninety nine and maybe future teammate Leover Pergueto supposed to be really good. Chris Butler with the Pirates. Got Henry Davis, 103 out of 150, former number one overall pick, going to the Pirates, Chris. I think number one overall pick, big catching prospect there. And this is pretty cool. I like the uh, the see-through, the acetate cards. Four out of 50, Khalil Watson. Elementary, my dear Watson. That goes to the Marlins, Chad. g are you going to share the haiku that you wrote? A class, it was a classic 575 syllable format. Jake Berger to 199 and Lonnie White Jr. Pirates, Chris. Correct, yeah. If someone rejects the qualifying offer, right, the team, the, the other team that signs, so that's why there's a little gamesmanship in those qualifying offers. It's like, well, if you sign this guy, you're, you're, you're going to owe us a draft pick. Oh, that was too much to type. Was it good, though, Gilo? Is this Pulitzer worthy? I don't know if they give away Pulitzers for haikus. Maybe Nobel Prize for, uh, for, for poetry, for literature. It's an award winner. I, I, like, I like to hear it. All right, final box, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, this break is sneaky long. I think well, it's mostly the mini boxes. I feel like if there weren't mini boxes, how many? I feel like I'd save like 15, 20 minutes. So this is going to be a touch over an hour. I'll do a quick autograph recap. I'm going to take a little break after this, and then we'll uh, we'll reconvene and we'll see. I think I do see some orders coming in. Yeah, I do see a handful of orders coming in. I'd love to do a few. This is not a World Cup break, but I'd love to do a few more World Cup breaks by the time we call it tonight. By the time we get to the end of our evening. So let's get some done. Let me just double check how where we are on that. Hmm. I think we got a spot moving in that five box mixer filler. 
Maybe the Panini Black full case random number block. I'm seeing, seeing a little movement there. Let's get those team randoms done. Yeah, I'm not sure that this is head works. It's like that qualifying offer seems like a weird rule. I'm not sure what the history is behind that or or why that exists. Well, MLB website saying that it's the qualifying offer is a competitive balance measure that was implemented as part of the 2012 collective bargaining agreement. There's Luis Gill, 15 out of 75. In the qualifying offer system, clubs wishing to receive compensatory draft picks for loss of free can make one year, one client worth of salary, the mean salary of MLB's 125 highest players to their impending free agent prior to the offseason. And there's Shailen Polanco, 60 out of 150. Well, no, the, 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 but the qualifying offer amount is always the same. Rex, that's the thing. It's $19.65 million for everybody. Take it or leave it. It's sort of like, I guess, like middle ground players where it's just like, we kind of want... Like, we'll, we'll take you for a season for 20 years. It's kind of the, the, the kind of in-betweener players. We've got a redemption back here. It's Francisco Alvarez, the 25. Ooh, two hits. Hendry Mendez, Brewers, Bennett, and Yiddy Cap. Marlins, Chad, bonus. So I think it's kind of like a in-between sort of thing. Competitive balance, maybe that's suggesting that, that maybe teams that can't afford to create like long-term contracts or something like that, but they want to hang on to a guy for a year. And if, if they can't hang on to the guy, they reject the offer, then they're rewarded with a, I guess that's, that's kind of how I'm seeing it. There's Denzer Guzman, 39 out of 99. And the last auto is for the Giants, Averson Artega. It's going to be for Ed P. and San Francisco. And that's your break, ladies and gentlemen. That was 2022 Bowman Sterling Baseball. Full case break, 12 boxes, 60-plus autos. Sometimes plus. we got an extra auto here. And prospect hunting, really good-looking set, a lot of great stuff. Nothing, uh, no uh, extra randomizer at the end. Just nice start-to-finish break and a lot of nice autographs. A lot of nice color, a lot of nice parallels. Thanks everyone for getting in, appreciate it. We got another case loaded up, full spots available and we're planning on two fillers, but we can cancel a filler if those full spots keep rolling along. A lot of nice color there, the Luis Angel Acuna. The out of 10 sterling signage is really sharp. And that, my friends, is that. Thanks for watching, everyone. That was Random Team 2, Random Team 3 in the store. JazzPeaceCaseBreaks.com. I'm Joe. I'll see you next time for the next baseball break. Bye-bye.